As we start our time together, I'm going to invite you, as, as always, to take a deep breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, and as you breathe in, breathe in the Spirit of God, God's love, God's joy, God's patience and kindness. Breathe out, and as you breathe out, let go of everything else, your fear, your anger, your sin, your anxieties. Breathe in, breathe out. God is present with you, with me. And would you pray with me? Lord, open our eyes, our ears, our hearts. Pour your spirit on us. Make us and shape us into the people that you have called us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And the scripture for today is Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What are humans that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them, what, what are we? This while the psalmist is reflecting on, on the majesty of God. The glory above the heavens set the sun and the stars in the sky, created all things. And the psalm is attributed to King David, perhaps the greatest king of, of Israel. I wonder if he's watching the sunset, or maybe he's sitting out under the night sky away from the city lights, and, and one of those nights where there's too many stars to even count, like, like Van Gogh painted blues and blacks and yellows and swirls filling the sky. Or maybe he's on vacation, visiting the, the cedars of, of Lebanon or floating on the, on the Dead Sea. Whatever it is, he sees, sees the fingerprints of God in everything, overwhelmed by the majesty, the intricacies, the, the details, an artist's touch, carefully crafted, too, too well made to be an accident. Maybe you've had that experience before too. Maybe on a vacation, the, the Grand Canyon or the Florida Keys or, or, the, or the Everglades, or maybe just on your back porch at night watching the sunset. I remember a night when I lived in San Antonio, Texas. I was in maybe third or, or fourth grade at the time. They say the sky is bigger in Texas, and this sky, this night sky was purple. Purple I had never seen before. Purple I haven't seen since. I didn't even know that the sky could do that, could, could be like that. And it meant more than just the sky to me. There was an intelligence behind it, the, the work of an immense talent. I get the same feeling, the same experience sometimes at the beach, far away from the condos and the crowds, nothing but, but sand and, and sea for, for miles. Someone who can do all this, craft all this, shape it and mold it, breathe life, set the sun and the stars in the sky, the, the seas and the cedars, fill the sky with stars or make it purple. Someone who can make a sunset. Why, why be mindful of us? Why care about us? Why consider us at all? We're so, I talk of the experience of, of being overwhelmed, seeing the fingerprints of, of God, the night sky, the stars, the Grand Canyon, the, the sunset. But I also, I also think of hiking up to Amicalola Falls with my, with my kids, 
It's near the southern end of, of the Appalachian Trail, a beautiful sight, but all my kids could do was complain about how hard the hike was, how high we had to go, how, how much further. And I, I feel the same thing sometimes. The beach is wonderful, but sometimes there's just all the sand in, in, in your crevices and in, in, in the car when you get in the car. And it's sometimes so oppressively hot. Or the night sky, it's beautiful, but then the, the gnats and the mosquitoes come out. All the little flaws, the little distractions, or we think of them that way. What are humans that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. We have those distractions and, and flaws too. King David, who this is attributed to, he, he was great, but he had plenty of flaws, abused his power. And Van Gogh, I mentioned the painter of Starry Night. He struggled with depression, maybe some schizophrenia, and, and you and me, and I can name about a dozen things just off the top of my head about myself that I don't find particularly glorious or, or honorable. And it doesn't take much imagination to think of about two dozen things that I don't like in others. Yet, yet made just a little lower than God, the psalm says, crowned in glory. Made in the image of God, Genesis says given dominion over the works of God's hands, all things under our feet, could also be translated as, as stewardship, taking care of someone else's property, their, their representatives. Which again, doesn't seem to be such a great idea. I mean, we don't take very good care of, of the animals, the planet, or ourselves. Really any of, all of creation. Such an awesome responsibility what, what are we? Why mindful of us? Something special and unique about us. God cares for us. Gives us responsibility. The, the, the intricacies the artists touch, the fingerprints of God, the things that we see in the, in the Grand Canyon or the night sky or the, the sunset or the stars or the beach or whatever else also true of you and me. Even the flaws and the, the distractions, the, the inconsistencies. God's children, First John says, those same hands that, that carefully and creatively molded and shaped all those beautiful things, carefully and creatively molded and shaped you, me. God cares for me, for you. As I said, I imagine King David sitting under the night sky or watching the sunset and being moved to, to write this psalm. Richard Rohr talks of three ways of viewing the sunset. One is to see the beauty of the sunset and, and enjoy it for, for what it is. Two is to see the sunset, to see the beauty of it, enjoy it for what it is, and then also begin to see the intricacies and the machinations behind it, be overwhelmed by that. And then the third way is to see the beauty and enjoy the sunset for itself, to, to see the intricacies and the, the machinations and be overwhelmed by that, but then also begin to see the connection between the beauty of the sunset and the beauty in everyone and everything else. All beautiful, all cared for. Why mortals, why care for us, why be mindful of us? Because God is love and all is created in love. Would you pray with me? Lord, remind us that you Create and care for each one of us. Help us to create and care for others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storm. 
May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he's shown you. And may he bring you home rejoicing once again to our door. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.